What's going on guys? It's Matt Jacobs here. I want to talk to you a little bit about how you can achieve a blurry background in your pictures or videos. This is an effect a lot of people seek, especially people that are new to the craft and that's just, you know, you see a nice portrait with a nice blurry background. You think, I want to be able to do that. That looks professional. There's three different factors that go into achieving a blurry background and that's compression, which I talked pretty extensively about in my last video, your aperture and your minimum focus distance. Right now I'm an aperture at F8 on an 18 millimeter lens. So it's a pretty wide angle lens. So the I'm not getting a lot of compression, which a longer focal length will give you more compression and therefore more background blur and separation. Um, so I don't have that going for me. I also have an aperture of F8, which would be like a landscape aperture to get everything in focus. And I'm pretty far away from the camera. So there's a lot going on here that is not giving me a blurry background. But even with this wide angle lens, I could achieve a blurry background by doing a couple things. So this lens has a pretty good minimum focus distance and I'm pretty close to it. It's not super flattering on a wide angle lens. And the light is fluctuating out here in the woods, but even just this little bit of extra closeness is giving me some background separation. I could also open up the lens. So if I open up the aperture a little bit and get close minimum focus distance, I can get more of a background blur. So um, you can accentuate this with different focal lengths as well, which I'm gonna to switch to another focal length here. So now on an aperture F5.6, so not quite F8, not as much in focus, but I'm on a 56 millimeter lens, which is an 85 full frame equivalent, it reaches out there pretty well. So what that means is there's more compression. So no matter what you do, you're probably gonna to have to stop down your aperture to a higher number. It's kind of weird how aperture works. It's a little inverse. So lower number means you're letting more light in, higher number means you're letting less light in, and a higher number also means a bigger depth of field getting more in focus, and a lower number means getting less in focus. So this 56 millimeter lens has a minimum aperture of f1.4, which can get an insane amount of background blur probably too much sometimes where you can't tell where your subject is even. So you might with uh, with a really telephoto lens, you might want your aperture to be higher because the compression is already gonna add so much background blur. But I can really accentuate the background blur on this by just getting a little bit closer to the camera here. You can already see that the background is blurring a lot and this is a very tight shot. <laughs> now, <laughs> now look at that. Minimum focus distance, compression, and your aperture open all the way to get the shallowest depth of field. Can you tell what's in the background still? Can you even tell what's back there? <laughs> Go, come on. So in video, your autofocus is really gonna struggle with, uh, <laughs> with your aperture wide open. But look at this, look how, look, it's like properly exposed here. I'm in complete shade. It does look really nice actually, but I have a hard time believing that the autofocus is doing an exceptionally good job. I'm sure if I really punched in on it, on something you could see pulsing or focus hunting of some sort. But that is how you can achieve a background blur in video and pictures. I plan to show a bunch of picture examples of kind of what I'm saying throughout the video. So yes, minimum focus distance, a wide open aperture and compression. And as I said, click on the video that just popped up because I have a video talking really in depth about compression and just different focal lengths in general. So now we're at a more reasonable aperture <laughs> um, with more reasonable background blur. So I want to talk to you a little bit about picking and choosing when you want to have background blur. Because when I was first starting off, I had a Nikon D3300, my first DSLR camera, and I got a, a 1.8 lens for it. And I was constantly shooting it wide open, like flowers and stuff, whatever, just because it was like, wow. The background is so, so blurry. Um, but you oftentimes don't want that much background blur. For example, just shooting pictures of my dogs, um, they don't have as flat of a face as a person. So you can't really shoot a picture of a dog at F1.4 if they're looking at the camera because if you focus on their eye, their nose is gonna be out of focus. That's how shallow your depth of field is. And unless they're in profile and their face is like all in the same distance from the camera, you open, you know, shooting a picture of a dog wide open, you're gonna have like a blurry nose or the other side of their head is gonna be blurry. Like even a person with a really wide open lens, you know, one eye will be in focus and the other one will be like super blurry on the other side of their nose. So, you know, don't always shoot your portraits all the way open. Maybe shoot at F2, F2.8, 
so at least the whole person is in focus. And I'll show you some examples here of stuff I've shot at f5.6, whatever, like more close to the middle range of your aperture on your lens that is has plenty of background separation and has whole objects in focus and I think does a better job than just having a small plane of existence in focus and the whole rest of your picture is blurry. It's just a bunch of dead space. And there are, are advantages to stopping down your lens to a higher number as well. If usually at f5.6 to f7, that's when your lens is gonna be the sharpest. Whenever you have your lens all the way open at f1.4, say even if you have an f2 lens, you're gonna notice it's not nearly as sharp as if you had a shot your picture at f5.6. The f8 is usually a good sweet spot for landscape, f10, whatever. But you also notice that the other end of it, like if you stop your lens all the way down to its highest number aperture, stopped all the way to the smallest circle your aperture can be, f16 or f22 or whatever your lens goes to, it's also gonna be softer at that end. The two extremes are gonna have lesser image quality than in the middle. So you will benefit overall for your images, giving up a little bit of background blur, getting a little bit of a sharper image by utilizing your lens in its best areas. Also, I'm a big fan of shooting pictures of stuff at minimum focus distance of lenses. Obviously with a with a lens like this getting all the way up and getting a really tight close up could be good for like an intense moment in a movie or getting detail shots or whatever. But you'll notice that minimum focus distances of lenses kind of the same thing as being at the extremes can be softer than just stepping back a little bit like right now it's going to be probably sharper and more reliable more reliable autofocus than me getting up close because this with minimum focus distance the closer you get the blurrier it is so taking a step back at this keeping your aperture the same even you're going to have more focus back here and it's you're especially if you're in video your autofocus is not going to have as hard of a time figuring out what to focus on but i certainly noticed a lot with this lens right here this is the fujifilm uh, 23 millimeter f2 lens it's a great little lens it has a really close minimum focus distance but if you have your aperture all the way open which creates a softer image and you're at your minimum focus distance i would say the image in that scenario is almost unusable for especially delivering to a client but i don't even want to keep any images i'll show you I, I took some pictures of some coke cans all the way open at the minimum focus distance and it was just like so soft and it was you know, not a good image, even taking a step back with keeping everything the same, but not being at the complete minimum focus distance was a little bit better, but not as good as it could have been. Just listen to how good that aperture ring is though. <laughs> I'm gonna have to do a video on this and just, I'm gonna start systematically going through my lenses and cameras and stuff and just everything Fuji related and my video equipment, just the stuff that I use all the time and that has become tried and true for me. I wanna do a video talking pretty extensively about all this stuff. But I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you learned something or were reassured of something you already knew or whatever, you had found entertainment value. I hope you like my examples. Um, but yeah, thank you for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed. Let me know if you want more photography content. Let me know if there's if you want me to do a video specifically on my X-T3 or any of the lenses that I've talked about so far, or if you have a suggestion for another topic that you think I could do well. I really much appreciate that. So I'll see you in the next one, guys. Bye.